One piece of technology that used to get a lot of love, but not really so much these days, is storage, particularly SSDs. Now, I was part of an Antec when we went through the SSD revolution, this whole migration from spinning rust to NAND flash-based storage. And it came, uh, we've now got higher capacities, we, performance is where it is based on PCIe Gen 3, Gen 4, Gen 5. But there have been a few key innovations in this space, which has helped us adopt high performance, high endurance, and extended the life of our storage devices. I'm gonna take a look at Micron's new AWT technology and explain where this fits in and why it's an extension of what we've already got to help SSDs become super important and powerful. <laughs> So just to clarify, this isn't a sponsored video. This just came across my desk and I thought this is really interesting. Let's kind of explain it on camera. Now the way NAND storage devices, SSDs work is that you store data in cells inside the device. And depending on how old your device is, it stores that data in different ways. This is where we have what's called SLC, MLC, TLC, QLC. So the earliest SSDs began their life as SLC SSDs. This is single level cell. This means you stored one bit of data per cell. In that cell means you have a voltage that essentially relates to an on or an off, and that's where your bit is stored. MLC is multi-level cell, and even though it's got an M in it, it means two bits of data. This means you have to manage four different voltage levels to get your two bits of data. TLC is a tri-level cell, so this is three bits of data, eight different voltage levels, and then we come to QLC, which is the mainstay today in a lot of SSD applications. That's four bits per cell, 16 voltage levels. It's really difficult to manage. At, um, we've now got companies that can manage petabytes of the stuff across trillions and trillions of cells. The key problem here is that between those four different technologies, and even penta-level cell exists in some form or another, is that there are trade-offs. There are trade-offs in terms of read performance, write performance, and longevity. The general trend is read performance can increase with the more bits you have, write performance decreases with the more bits per cell you have, and endurance goes way down. And the endurance goes down because you have to manage all those different voltage levels. NAND cells over time age. And as a result, where those voltage bands are drifts over time. You need a smart NAND, a smart SSD controller that can monitor those voltage levels and adapt as your storage ages. But there are ways around this. Very early on, SSD started to over-provision data. This means you might have a 100 gigabyte drive, but the device would actually have 108 gigabytes of storage. As cells failed over time, some of that eight gigabyte spare would be used to replace the active cells being uh, written to. Or it would be more like a round robin where at boot time, a random set of 100 gigabytes would be used, and therefore you have even wear leveling. Now, as time went on, we decided, well, let's go from SLC, one bit per cell, to MLC, two bits per cell, TLC, three bits per cell, and QLC, four bits per cell. Uh, you weren't getting the increases in performance because writing to a cell uh, that has to hold four bits of data is incredibly slow. One way to get around this is extreme parallelism, and that's what NAND does naturally. But very quickly, SSD manufacturers found a way where they can operate their cells in different cell level modes. And this is when the first SSDs came out with an SLC cache. The whole purpose of this is when you have your one terabyte SSD, up to a quarter of the SSD naturally would be in SLC mode. So you'd write to that SLC at one bit per cell at a rate that was as fast as one bit per cell. If you went over that region, it would then default to the TLC or QLC, which was a lot slower uh, once that essentially buffer had run out. 
However, if you left the drive idle, it would slowly move the data from the SLC region to the QLC region. Uh, so this consumes power over time, but in reality, you then get back that SLC cache. So if you need to use the drive, it keeps it really, really fast. Now, realistically, when this happened, that honestly only affected large file transfers. With the large file transfers, if you're, you know, even this video that we're recording now is going to be gigabytes and gigabytes and gigabytes. Modern SSDs, that probably still fits in the SLC cache. Back in the day, it might have run over to into the TLC or the QLC, gone really slow, and then you'd have to wait for the drive to manage it. The benefit of also writing to an SLC first means that the endurance of those cells are a lot better and your drive can be rated for more terabytes written over its lifetime. So that's fine, you have SLC as a cache to TLC and QLC, which is the rest of the drive. And as the drive fills up, less and less of the uh, cache is available because it would always uh, essentially relate to a quarter of the available space. Micron is now introducing in its 2600 series of SSDs, something called AWT, Adaptive Write Technology. This is taking the concept one stage further. If you're familiar with CPUs, you might be familiar with say like big, little, big cores, little cores, pairing uh, as they do in smartphones. If we consider big, little like SLC, QLC and a modern drive, recently in smartphones we've had mid-range cores go in the middle, something that's not quite the highest performance but also something that's not quite the highest efficiency. Uh, with Micron's adaptive write technology, that's essentially what they've done. Instead of relying on an SLC for your very fast writes and then the QLC for the bulk storage, they've put a middle layer in there of TLC. So this is your three uh, bits per cell write. The idea being that one of the reasons why an SLC can sometimes not make sense is that it reduces the capacity of that region by a factor of four. You know, you're sold a one terabyte drive and they say, oh, you have 250 gigs of SLC. That actually means the whole drive, even though it's only a quarter um, of your capacity. With what Micron is saying that they're doing here with AWT, is that you have some SLC, some TLC, and some QLC, so that when you do hit those boundaries with long, hard, consistent writes, while performance may degrade a little bit, you won't hit the real performance degradation that you get when you essentially run out of space, when you run out of SLC cache in the way that uh, singular drives that only have this one layer end up doing. It kind of makes sense. I kind of thought this would have been a thing already, um, but I got the technical brief over from Micron, and the idea here is what, what at, the, at the end of the day, you're balancing between speed and capacity. SLC provides the speed, QLC provides capacity, and the T TLC in the middle does a little bit of both. If you then idle the drive after you've done your write, the system then slowly migrates all of that data into a QLC portion of the drive, resizes the regions automatically, and away you go again. The idea being that even if you're doing random writes or sequential writes, whether you're doing low Q depth, high Q depth, the minute it goes idle, it gets to sort itself out. And that way you're in the best possible situation for the next workload. So it's coming on the M.2 drives first, like I said, the 2600 available in um, what looks like one terabyte and two terabyte drives. Um, the diagram, ha the, the, the technical brief here, I'll show some images shows their description of how this works. They're looking at it in terms of you know, liquid buckets and eventually everything gets poured into the QLC bucket and it resizes regions. They say some of this is from enabled through ma the manufacturing of the devices. Some of it occurs through the user actions. And then ultimately at the end of the day, it's the drive that manages this data as long as you have power to it. Ultimately, it's, it's, it's a really simple concept, um, just smoothing out those, that harsh transition from SLC to QLC. Um, realistically, most people, you, me, probably won't notice it if we get one of these drives. Um, I have to hope that at some level it also helps with the longevity of these systems. As I said, 
writing to TLC and QLC actually is harsher on the bit cells than just writing to an SLC region. Um, but we'll have to see that when people get in to test these. Um, I just thought this was really interesting to discuss because much like transitioning from big little to big mid little, we're now doing that with SSDs. Um, the next thing I want to happen with SSDs though is finally can we break out of eight terabyte being the max capacity for the 2280s. Um, that's been, it's been the maximum for five years. We actually need to up it to 16. Um, what feature do you think we should need on SSDs? My other gripe is I want to see PCIe 5 by 2 SSDs so I can populate my systems with more drives. That probably won't happen, but please do let me know in the comments what you think SSDs, the next revolution SSDs has to happen, um, either technology or innovation.